that's why I focus so much on admins, and that's a perfect segue into Kiwi Farms. Why I don't like Kiwi Farms, because people ask me. The yeah, admins directly involved in, in yeah, the Yeah, there you go. That, that's really the difference there. That, that's, that's totally it. It's like, okay, as an image board admin, all image board admins are aloof to a degree. I think I was one of the most aloof image board admins, worse than Moot in some ways. Like, because I just had no interest in 90% in of what my users are talking about. And I was just using, like, hacks so that nobody, none of the global volunteers, because all of the IPs were visible to global volunteers. <laughs> but when I would post, it, it would change the IP. So that, like, before it even got inserted into the database. Such that it seemed like, you know, I was just posting from somewhere in America. And it wouldn't create a mod log entry or anything. So I would just post on the furry board like, a lot. And so <laughs> I, yeah, I just, I was quite aloof as an admin. And <laughs> the last episode of the show, I was actually talking to Mark, who, like, was instrumental, really, in making me kind of see things his way, at least for the short, you know, time that I did in Re Gamergate, because I'm not a gamer. I, uh, one of the symptoms of what this is why I was, I'm not good at hand-eye coordination, so I don't play games hardly at all. Like, I, as a kid, I would always just watch, um, like, the other kids in foster care play, because I'm just that bad at it. I, I would lose to a seven-year-old, most likely. So, oh, wow. oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. Um, so, I d don't know about this. Like, I don't even care about video game journalism. And so, you know, to their credit, the people that were in on this, like Milo Yiannopoulos and all of them, were convincing to the during the time that it worked. And, yeah, and by the time Watkins had control, I mean, he was a far-right asshole. He was never going to, you know... Never gonna reconsider. So, yeah, um, also they scammed me by pretending that they own Pew Channel legitimately, but that's a whole other story. But to talk about Kiwi Farms, the admin's directly involved. And, you know, even Jim, you know, as, as, as much of a dick as Jim is, right? Like, he has never so far used the Q account to post somebody's docs, right? Right. And, and, and Jim is one of the worst image board admins, but even he doesn't do that. Do you want to tell people? Because I actually don't know. I don't follow like people's Kiwi Farms threads. Like, I don't go there. You know, I only go there if uh, like like. Yeah. So the staff actively participate, and the other bit is, you know, I, I know I know a lot about the site, but I mean, like, just like what? Why were you added? A. Uh, um. So I was added. That's actually a really funny story. Um. I was originally added, and I and I don't know this for sure, but 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 it looks like by somebody very disgruntled with my website. Um, I, I own a large Otherkin website. I'm controversial in the Otherkin community because I've done so many TV things. Uh, it's an unwritten rule. We don't talk to the media, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of where the thread originally came from. Uh, that, that's why I think, and, and I could be wrong, but nine times out of ten, I'm right in these speculations. That's why I think Desert Eagle or whatever their name is uh, wrote the thread. Where my thread really started blowing up is I was dating a person uh, named Alyssa, and I'm not going to give a full name for fear of defamation and all of that. Oh, no, no. Uh, but she, she was not well. Um, and granted, I did some things I'm not proud of as well. I, I really wanted to fix the relationship. I felt like, given everything she's been through in life uh, growing up and, you know, past that, I felt like, you know, there was a point in the relationship where... I was the closest thing to, to some semblance of normal that she's had. Um, and that's funny to think because I'm definitely not normal. Uh, but I was trying to fix it. But she, she has severe delusions. Um, this is somebody who's told me every other week that she believes that she's pregnant, even though no sexual activity has occurred. I, I mean, that level of has literal false beliefs. Um, and she decided, her and her other partner decided, that they were going to post a whole bunch of nonsense without any real proof about me on Kiwi Farms um, in that thread that the person who didn't like my website started. So that's really where it blew up, and it just kind of took off from there. It was never started with any sort of noble intentions. It was never Naya did something so terrible, and, you know, we, we need to let the world know about Naya. It was never benevolent intentions. It was Even a person, if it were, bringing it to Kiwi Farms right, is not the right value. And an ex-partner... Who had an axe to grind um and, and that's where the thread started and, and it just kind of grew from that gotcha so uh, yeah i i i, I said that even if it were 
Kiwi Farms, not the right venue. You know, you're trying to, like, actually change things positively in the world. Pretty sure everybody... <sighs> okay, you should have known that as early as 2013. You know, I never thought that, like, oh, you know, even when Moon was working on fucking HN software. I, like, I never thought that, like, oh, yeah, you know, the Kiwi Farms, a great place to make positive change in the world. No. <laughs> right? right? Like, he was just who, who uh, HN could afford with Jim Watkins' hobo grift. You know, so, uh, to explain the hobo grift, basically, the hobo grift goes like this. It's where, okay, earlier in the call, we talked about how, like, I have this nonprofit, right? So, I don't ask for donations ever. Since, since I've been able to, like, correct my life after I, you know, I believe the Philippines, just been not expecting it, that was the only time I, like, asked for donations, and, you know, now I was able to fix things financially, like, a lot, and so... I don't need to do that, and I, and Jim doesn't need to do it either, and, uh, to a degree, I don't think Moon needs to do it either, but he plays up the hobo grift a little bit too, we can talk about that, because we're going to talk about their finances, um, however, I, Moon, sorry, Watkins and Moon, how they got involved was, uh, Jim was being obstinate about replacing HN software, it really needed replacing, and having me, you know, this uh crippled guy on like let's see oxy and other shit right and just is up 24 hours at a stretch sometimes trying to run this website you know uh mm -hmm. as your sole employee on it was not going to end well <laughs> and the software was at such a state because the original author uh michael horowitz he that, that's what he calls himself i don't know his real name he also he called himself michael save once you know Anyway, people claimed that Horowitz was his real last name. I don't know. But, uh, Michael, save the internet. In 2010, he wrote it while he was high on cocaine. He admitted that to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the Bychan Fork was written by Marcin Wabanowski. Uh, he's Polish. He has a huge drinking problem. Well, at least he did at the time that he wrote it. And so, like, <laughs> he would make commits sometimes, and then have to revert them when he woke up in the morning and was sober. <laughs> Yeah, but that this is the oh level my gosh. Of I, I can just imagine him drunk committing something, and then he wakes up and he's like, "What the hell did I just?" <laughs> yeah, that would happen. Okay, and then I, right? I get my Galaxy Brain idea. Holy shit! I know how to fix ImageBoard for free, and also trick ImageBoard users into accepting a furry board. I have to work on this right away. So while coming off mushrooms, right? And so I make HN while also high. So it's been just three drug users, right? One after the other after the other, working on this software. And it was never written for a large website. It was I mean, that, that tracks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It totally tracks. And so, it was falling apart, like, in every possible way. And so, Moon was basically the only one in this space that was a fucking developer that needed a job. <laughs> and so, it was decided that, like, and he ran the fundraiser himself, but I supported it. Uh, and so he ran, like, a fundraiser to replace HN software because it was that bad. And Josh wouldn't pay, or, sorry, Jim Watkins wouldn't pay for it. And I, I think Jim was just kind of expecting that I would eventually fix it on my own, you know? And this isn't, that's not what ended up happening. Um, oh, God, man, man. <laughs> yeah, but, but anyway, that's how, that's how I met Moon. <laughs> Um, so he comes in and, and, and he does it, but he gets scammed by, by Jim Watkins because he, he, okay, Moon actually had like a reasonable offer. I know it's crazy, but he did something reasonable in his life where he was like, all right, $8,000 a month, you know, uh, or, or, or sorry, a quarter, or, or maybe it was even a year. I don't even remember. Uh, no, it was a quarter. Yeah, 8000 a quarter. So uh, to, to maintain the software, like in perpetuity. And Jim Watkins said no. <laughs> And so, what do you think? He was going to find someone cheaper? Yeah, that's what he thought. He thought that I would stay. <laughs> yep, yep. He thought that I would stay, but I was getting sick of it. And, and he didn't actually find someone cheaper, by the way. His fucking son, Ron. So, well, um, of course. It would have to be nepotism because no reasonable developer is going to do all that for such a large scale for that price. Right, exactly. And I, you know, when you're really young, you don't even know the scale of the problem you're tackling. I didn't know all of this, like, stuff that goes into running a large website when I was, like, <laughs> working on Tinyboard with, like, Save the Internet way back in fucking 2010. And, and then, you know, Marcin in, in, in 2013, right? Like, or, no, 2012. I, I just, 
it all hits you and it's like, wow, this is like really hard actually. And uh, one person can't do it. And that was becoming increasingly clear. So I was sick of it. And yeah, it all came to a head and blow up. But here's the funny thing. To this very day, Jim Watkins thinks he's in the right on that. And he will probably not let the Kiwi Farms use Van Wattek. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. And I also think that, you know, when somebody creates a site, and, and i just administrating and it's not even nearly on the same scale, but just administrating community. From a policy, administrative, and user-facing perspective, that's not what I'm about. Like, I, I can do it. I, I wrote our terms and rules. I, I think they're reasonable. But that's not what my skill set is. My skill set is actually the building of the community. So now that we've got a community and users are kind of going to it, especially something as something like 8chan, uh, you know, that's a completely different situation. You've got developers who are making something. They're not necessarily skilled community uh, moderators or, or, you know, people essentially oriented and, and to, ah, oriented individuals. And it, it's almost, and I think the word you use good, it's almost aloofness that allowed the site to get as bad as they are. But then you've got the Kiwi Farms. Their full intention, the intention of Joshua Moon is for that content to prevail. It's not that he's aloof or that he, you know, believes in free speech, so he doesn't moderate a whole lot. They do moderate a ton on Kiwi Farms. Oh, they do. They, they delete posts, they ban people from threads, etc. It is it's it's very different to have something that goes wrong due to almost inattentiveness of staff versus the blatant malice that is Moon Moon. Yeah, you know what annoys me about Moon is when he pretends that like, oh he's just he has no control. His users would just, you know, pillory him if he were to delete this thread. You know, Gonzalo Lira, but can you please give me a Ukraine visa? Um, that is what annoys me because, like, okay, I just don't like liars, and he's a liar because he would protect people. Okay, Ethan Ralph, for example, was not liked on the Kiwi Farms for a while, but they were good with each other, you know? Ethan Ralph would go on mad at the internet, and <laughs> Moon Moon would go on Ethan Ralph's show, and so Ethan Ralph did not have a thread for a while, like a long while way longer than, than like they wanted to have one and and, and so he it, it pretends he doesn't protect people he pretends he protected me you know like and i didn't ask him to i never would have asked him to but he just did because like he thought you know it would be bad to have fred as an enemy ha huh? correct womp womp um but <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah you know like 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 he protects people it's so fucking obvious and okay why are the targets always trans because he is super fucking transphobic. And I saw he, that in person. Yeah, he, he's very... Just just how he operates. The targets of Kiwi Farms, generally speaking, are people that Moon personally has a dislike of. Um, it, it's very... And, and again, that, that's, where, that's where it's a little different from something like 8chan or even 4chan. The, administ the, the hatred of, on Kiwi Farms comes from the top down. It's not from the users overrunning the site, and I can't do anything, there's too many of them. It, it's it's a cult of personality is what it is, and, and they're taking his cues. It's not that mm -hmm. he's just powerless and sitting here and they're doing stuff and oh, woe is me. They're getting all of this from him. This is his ideology that these users are sharing and, and kind of forming a community around, and to say that he's not complicit in it is a bold-faced lie. Absolutely, absolutely. It it it's such a bold face by. I think that the especially like with the Kiwi Farms, it people sometimes say, "Well, Fred, wouldn't you say that you do a lot of the same stuff that the Kiwi Farmers do?" Because you know, I do a lot of archival and I do a lot of uh, making fun of people online. You know, like Watkins and Moon and <laughs> Jim Stewartson and Wells. Uh, Richard Spencer recently blocked me. Um, you know, I've got quite the quite the crew, and and, and so, I, I would say the difference is, like, Moon does it in this way where he just pretends that he is his users are, are totally like out of his control, and that he would very much like to delete your thread, Gonzalo, but he can't. You know, it, it's just petty and shitty, and I also think that. He picks on people for no fucking good reason. You know, like, okay, I one of the reasons I call this show bad at the internet is because I don't think that vigilantism is good. I would never do anything, almost, that the farmers do. 
But another thing is, the fucking kiwi farmers are bad at the internet. Their research is bad almost all of the time. It's so flawed. Um, Agreed. They're terrible at OSINT. And another thing they're really bad at, on top of just verifying that information is true, they're bad at direct action. Um, when my website was attacked, uh, we use a, a solution that I and a friend developed called Fang AI, um, which blocks most VPNs, disposable email uh, providers, it does some fingerprinting. Long story short, it makes it very difficult to do a coordinated attack in a normal way. Oh, it's so like enemy users, first, right? It's like enemy Yeah. First. So, so these users of, of Kiwi Farms, what they wind up doing to, to circumvent Fang AI is they used their home connections. So... <laughs> They're not even good at OPSEC. I, I've got several people who were part of an attempted raid on my site, and they're, you know, they're connecting from Comca Comcast or, or Zipwee Fiber or, or AT&T or Verizon. And I'm just like, dude, if you're going to you know, be the big, scary Kiwi farms and, and go raid people, you need to have better OPSEC. And, and by doing this, if, if, I, if I had the time and the effort, you know, I could file John Doe lawsuits against all of you get you identified and, and go after you legally. And, and that's, you know, that's not a legal threat because I know they're going to be like, oh my God, Naya's making law. No, I'm just saying your, your OPSEC is bad. You I know, totally agree, you yeah. You're good at what you're trying to do. Yeah, you know, I would even go further. I would say that <laughs> if I ran a popular website right now, I might do that just for the laughs. So if you want to say anybody's <laughs> making a legal threat right now, it might be Fred. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Uh, John Doe lawsuits? Heaven forbid. Uh, yeah, no, that might be pretty funny. Um, there is such a thing as, as uh, residential proxies, and it can absolutely be, sorry, answering a question, it could absolutely be uh, zombie computers or, or, you know, bad open relays. Nine times out oh, of yeah, ten. yeah, but figure that open. out, right? Like, you won't publish, in, like, okay, right, like, exactly. let's say you get the information and there's, like, only a 90-year-old woman living there, you won't publish that. Right, but if it's an open relay, and, and here's the thing, we have an open proxy detector. If, you're, if, you're, if your port 80 or common port is open, we would know that. If you've pwned an authentication required uh, proxy or something like that, which I don't think most of them have the capability of doing this. Most of them are not that smart. I, it's, it's just like 4chan. You had your groups within Anon who knew what they were doing, and then you had the thousands of mindless followers who would just plug things into low-orbit iron mm -hmm. cannon who were helping. Kiwi Farms is, is even bigger of a split. It's maybe 95% of, of people who would just plug in stuff uh, to low orbit, and then 5% who have any sort of skill. Jesus, I mean, uh, I'd go farther. I'd say it's 99-1, because the errors that they make... <laughs> and the errors that they make are so bad. I mean, I could say some of the ones they've made in my thread, but you go first, because I bet they're worse. I... Because, uh, you know, my thread is boring. It's just... It's about, like, people argue about my tweets. Am I right? Is Fred right in this tweet, or is Fred wrong? You know, like, it's just like an alternate Twitter timeline. It's dumb. <laughs> um, and then other shit that they do is just, like, like, be, oh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I can't wait until he dies. You know, that one. And then, it's so, but I, I've i seen them make big errors. And we can talk about some of the ones they made with uh, Keppels. But um, if you could not just Keppels. They, so I'm involved in, in investigations against Zeus sadism and bestiality. And after the leaks, the 2018 uh, Zeus Sadism leaks by Zudanim or Akila or however you know them, Kiwi Farms botched so many of those investigations. And, and I don't mean Kiwi Farms wasn't solely responsible. I, I can't get into details of everyone who was responsible. But Kiwi Farms tipped so many of those disgusting, evil people off that they went on a DFE spree, deleted a whole bunch of stuff, encrypted a whole bunch of stuff, and they got off of charges because of that. So even, even you know, Kiwi Farms oh, likes wow. to use the argument that, you know, we expose terrible people. You know, these yeah. people deserve to be on the site. You botched a criminal investigation. Those people deserve to be in jail. And, you know, you made Kira the Wolf famous or whatever. Okay, awesome. But he would have been in jail if it wasn't for your, your botchery. Uh, that's really incredible. I'm kind of speechless because, okay, the person that I was going to talk to who didn't show up... Um, <laughs> Uh, at burn burn eight, right? They, you know, use this line and 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 and, and you know, uh, used to at least, right? Like they saw kind of how this <laughs> Kiwi Farms inspired research is shit, right? And so they came around. But I, 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 I would have never thought of that. But you're totally correct. I mean, of course that happens. Of course they bought it. Yeah, because like, you know, I, <laughs> I've had some Kiro defenders recently like message me. You know, how, how do you even defend that? Anyway. Uh, well, people oh. basically say he's not in jail, right? So he didn't do it. 
because there's a statute of limitations and because of the uh, because of the Fifth Amendment actually prevents the government from compelling you to give them encryption keys. That's why he's not in jail. A combination of the statute of limitations and the would you say that Kiwi Farm is partially to blame? Yes, absolutely. They put what they had on him publicly. They tipped not just him. They are tipping all of these people off. Uh, you'll notice when I investigated Cupid, I did not go public with that until he was charged. Okay? Until the, the, the court bit was done, he was dealt with, they had their evidence. Kiwi Farms is posting all of this while law enforcement is still doing their investigation, and he's t they're tipping these people off. And, and they're getting away with terrible acts. And Kiwi Farms is like, her, her, you know, I'm over here helping save the world. To be self righteous. I'm so glad that. I had you on because I didn't know this. I mean, they point to Nick Bate as like the example, you know, of whatever good they've done in the world that even somebody like me can't argue with, you know? Oh, but we put Nick Bate in jail. And, okay, yeah, you put one in jail, sort of. I think other people actually did that, you know, but like, eh, all right, I can give you that one, but wow, they fucked up the Kiro thing? Now, oh my god, these guys. The whole, the whole Zeusadism like a ring investigation not just kiro they right, the other people a bunch of us yes and when you say they put uh nick bait in jail well i don't know because i'll, I'll give you an example that the leaker of the zoo sadism leaks eventually uh not eventually originally went to kiwi farms because they felt that law enforcement was not acting quick enough and they kind of wanted to go on the exposure route they stopped posting because they realized this is not you know early into it this isn't where I want to post shit. People are speculating. People are doing things that are, are causing problems for the investigation, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why the original poster pulled out. And then Kiwi Farms continued to shit all over the investigations. Yeah, wow. Um, also, I see at Burn Burn in our chat. I, I'm sorry. You're right. Yes. You would go on Kiwi Farms, though, and look at it. And I know that you would. So, you know, you, you can't go against that. But, yeah. Like, you, you, you weren't, like, a poster there, sure, right? And I know that you mostly just found Jim Medicare funny, okay? I get that, too. Like, uh, you know, I still, I still, and I'm really glad that you understood that they, they fuck things up in major ways constantly. It, like, I only thought that their research was bad before I did this stream, but, oh my god, they have actually made it so that the people that they fucking hate are not in jail? Like, how do you fuck up worse than that? Okay, I have kept things quiet for months before, like, because of Jim Watkins. Uh, I, I, I won't go too much into it because it's totally unrelated, but, like, the BBS Pink investigation, where I was able to prove that, you know, in the early 2000s, he had a site that was specifically set up to uh, have public threads where people would report, like, the pedophile posts, and for an entire, like, month or two months in 2005, no post got deleted. So it was basically just, like, a legal way for him to pretend to be doing something about the Peter Kalyanis site but while doing nothing. And also the global report key was public. So it was essentially a clear web pedo site. Um, I was able to prove all that. And I kept it secret for months. Because if all of that fucking shit had leaked on, on, onto something like the Kiwi Farms, right? He would have been able to DFE, you know? And, and so, God, I, I guess I just never thought about it because I guess, okay, I, um... I guess I just think that the Kiwi Farms is so incompetent that they never actually find anyone, you, you know, like, like, and that's kind of why I was willing to believe maybe the Kiro Defender a little bit, you know, because like, because they make so many mistakes. It, they, they, they accuse people for no reason, you know, like, uh, just because, oh, you followed this account and, you know, okay, maybe that account changed its name or, I mean, I follow back almost everyone, so what, I... I really, I, I yeah, they do a lot of guilt by association. Yes, and that's that. You know, when you're doing an investigation into a ring, association is something that you do have to look at. If I've got three people who I'm looking at for being potential zoo files, there is a level of if it walks like a duck, if it cracks, if it quacks like a duck, it's probably not a wolf. I mean, there is a level of that. But at the same time, you have to use other indicators you can't just use well this person follows or talks to or has casually said hi to this person once or twice right you know i'm following a bunch of people on my twitter for example people who liked my drop kiwi farms post i followed them for it because it's like oh cool campaign i'll help you organize let's let's follow each other disseminate have i looked at half of those accounts other than the fact that they like that post probably not so if they go back in and be like you know about a uh 
you know, two months later, oh my gosh, Naya has been following this person for two months and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, I followed them because they liked a single I, I, I don't want to interrupt you, um, but this Eric89074 person is definitely, at least I think, you know, <laughs> that's when I had it wrong twice in a row on Twitter. Probably a Kiwi Farms person. I'm going to answer what they said, though, about, you know, KF will be fine. No, they fucking won't. I mean, okay. Uh, do you have any opinions, by the way? You're the guest. So, like, do, do you have any opinions on where we're going from here? Because I sure So, the, the fact, fact that Cloudflare, as far as Kiwi Farms being fine, the fact that Cloudflare essentially said, hey, look, we've engaged law enforcement. Generally, that's not how this happens. Usually, if there is an issue with life safety and, and Facebook and, and Twitter and all the big social media sites actually have a way for a police officer or federal law enforcement agent to contact them without a warrant and say, look, we believe somebody's life is in danger. You need to A, shut an account down or B, provide us with this information. I think that's probably likely what happened with Kiwi Farms. I, I think there was probably a Fed contact or a you know, police contact through Cloudflare, and they probably responded to it, and they probably blocked access to the site as a result. I, I don't think that, you know, this is simply, oh, well, now they're off Cloudflare, they're going to move somewhere else. No, uh, it isn't. I, 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 did you follow what happened with HN or the Daily Stormer at all? The last yeah. two Cloudflare things. Good. So I think I think they're gonna. I, I and I think you're right. Sorry on on the on your tweet. I think they're gonna become a liability to the upstream provider and to the other customers um, of their current DDoS protection uh, solution, just as as your site did. <laughs> yeah. And I think they're gonna be booted off. Oh yeah. Uh, DDoS guard. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna make a prophecy here. If DDoS guard lasts more than a week, I will be fucking surprised. Like legitimately. I will start wondering if, like, the Russian government is not, like, involved somehow and, 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 and pulled the string. Because DDoS Guard has folded every time. It always folds. It is, it is, it is like the paper condom of the DDoS Guard, like, solutions, right? It works for a gaming server, you know? Like, it'll work for your Minecraft server or your IRC or whatever. But for something that is actually under a lot of scrutiny... And, you know, people know that they can just, like, send a bunch of packets at it. It's not going to work. And it's also DDoS guard dot fucking rue. So are you. The Ukraine war is in progress, and a lot of deep hearing has happened. You know, between the Russian internet and the Western. And um, j just because companies are kind of afraid of taking Russian money, right? And so I think DDoS guard is probably in a worse solution than that, like, to try to keep the Kiwi Farms online for Western audiences. And so... Unless they're fucking forced by Putin, which, why would he even do that? You know, like... He, it... that's, a, and that's another thing. So the Russian communications regulator, um, actually one of the reasons that they block access to and shut down sites, funnily enough, is encouraging or posting instructions on suicide. Um, that's a reason to get the Russian communication sensor to block you. That was actually one of the first things they started censoring over before they were directive to, to censor political speech. So now not only do they have to deal with how easily DDoS card will fold, they have the .ru domain, which is controlled you know, by the Russian state, essentially. They can get their domain name and, and uh, such pulled as well by, Russia by the Russian... But why did they move to a .ru domain? Like, he didn't lose his domain when he lost Cloudflare. Why did he do that? I believe he, in his mind, and, I, and I, I, I think there's some incompetence here too, but... Well, Russia and the U.S. don't get along, and I'm sure that Cloudflare folded as a U.S. company, so I'm going to take it to Russia. I, I mean, that's how people like Moon Moon think. They, they don't think on a grander scale. They don't think, okay, well, you know what? You're right. The Russians and the Americans are not getting along right now, but that doesn't mean that Russia doesn't enforce its own sort of standards. Russia may not like trans people. Okay, cool. But Russia also, from the history of actions by their censor, does not like it when online sites... Uh, essentially encourage suicide they have shut people down for it and and i have no doubt that yes. a is made that they'll shut kiwi i, I actually have a story about this funny enough because it came up with uh deplatforming efforts against hn um so one of the sites like because hn they tried ddos guard as well by the way and it lasted like three days so you know uh <laughs> good luck moon moon um you're gonna need it I can I bet right now, like 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 literally now, DDoS Guard is thinking of how they're gonna break it to the public. I, I guarantee it because they just it, it makes no financial sense. It, <laughs> yeah, because they'll just get packeted and packeted and packeted and packeted, and all of their actually like 
the customers that are not big risks but use them because you know like once in a while somebody ddoses their gaming stream but they actually can't use something like cloudflare like it has to be you know like a websocket server it has to be you know that kind of real-time communication it yeah they're fucked and and so <laughs> ddos guard is not gonna last and as we discussed vanwa tech is very unlikely to be able to take on moon moon right now um even if jim was willing because of how much trouble they've had even keeping Aikun online even the like 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 you know ballless Aikun that now exists i i i came up with this uh galaxy brain interpretation that like you know eh, hn like as well, yeah okay like the, the cock on hn's bowl was like board creation right so that the new eight cone is like a cockless bowl you know and but why i say that is because if you can't create boards you cannot so easily create like um terms of service violating content you know the users can't like they really can only discuss allowed topics like fucking q and on like uh jim did not recreate the poll board which you know like all the shootings, right? Because of what I did. He didn't want to have to do this, you know? Uh, that's why he hates me so much. Is why he's starting to kill me twice so far. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, this stream is always lit. Man, you're teaching me so much, actually. I'm very glad I did it. I, um, okay. So, but, uh, what is the, the grand plan? Like, Kiwi Farms, really, I only think it's got two options. And neither are, are good for them. Either they're just gonna have to, you know, bounce around like Moon does himself you know, around Eastern Europe. Where is he right now? Ruma, Serbia, right? I mean, that's, as far as I know, that's accurate. Uh, you know, he throws stones from his glass house in fucking Ruma. Um, he, uh, yeah, that's where he is. And, and who knows, like, uh, one of the funniest controversies is the Ukraine visa controversy, because, you know, he used to pretend that he couldn't delete threads. But then he offered to do, like, okay, not delay, but delist from the Google search results, the thread of Gonzalo Lira, so-called Coach Red Pill and MRA, uh, if that person would give him, like, do immigration fraud for him. So basically, um, hire Josh Moon, in, in quotes there, for $20,000 a month, and then Moon Moon would pay back the 20000 right? And then it would have looked like on paper to the Ukrainian authorities that Moon Moon had a job in Ukraine, and then he could actually get a work visa, yeah. And then he pissed off the, the person, right? Like, uh -huh. he made a threat about him or something, and they're just like, screw that. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what happened. And that person posted it publicly and gave, like, basically the first proof that anyone had. That Moon Moon, like actually like protects people for his own advantage you know uh at least i think that was the first proof like i could be wrong but that was the first one that was super solid like you know because uh, this dude gonzalo lira coach red pill he was actually liked by a lot of the kiwi users you know because he's like a far right you know mra dickhead so uh oh my god yeah that that was not a that's how ethan ralph by the way oh my god all the oh, characters in this story they hate ralph so much like if you follow their uh, Telegram, like, they mentioned, they were, at least the last couple of days, they were mentioning him for, like, no reason. Like, like they just hate, like, if, if I search Ralph in there right now, uh, we have some from literally less than, a, than uh, less than two minutes ago. Somebody's mentioning Ethan Ralph. Like, they have this hate focus on him. And not that he's a great person, but just the level of, oh my gosh, like, they, they get so damn obsessed. Well, you know why? Because Ethan Ralph is also a white nationalist, and Ethan Ralph hates trans people, right? Like, but they don't like him. Like, that's what I don't yeah. get. Yeah, well, because, because he's a traitor. <laughs> no, but they see him as a traitor. See, so I kind of want to explain the Kiwi Farms economy, because I don't think people get it. Uh, Kiwi Farms is essentially a three-tier system um, in economic terms. So at the bottom, you know, you have the underclass, as I call them. These are the everyday Kiwis. So they essentially um, are, like, obsessives that usually have <laughs> very sus motives as you were saying like the person that made your thread was probably someone that was mad at you for another reason you know um yeah that's very common uh for not liking someone and these guys basically will just do you know so-called research in quotation marks and just all day long posting on the kiwi farms and most of that is even so dumb that the other kiwi farmers call it out you know like it's it's so galaxy brain, or it's just so stupid, and, and <laughs> yeah. So, so most of that goes nowhere. But occasionally, every once in a while, something will get posted that will kind of like rise in true. Like they'll start seeing it as true, you know. And when that happens, it gets to uh, bumped up to tier two. So <laughs> the tier two of the Kiwi Farms economy is people like, okay, great example, Andrew Warsley. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
people uh, like that. PPP, yeah. PPP, very big one. Um, flamenco, uh, Dami Pesos, um, <laughs> it used to be Mundane Matt, but <laughs> no longer, they turned on him. And by stupid face, I mean the user, not some, not an individual with a stupid face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be clear. Uh, these are basically just low charisma streamers, but the, what they do is they are essentially aggregators of the Kiwi Farms. And, uh, you know, this is how the Kiwi Farms is kind of able to remain monetized and profitable. It's not exactly public, but you don't need to be a genius to figure out that they rely on the Kiwi Farms for almost all their content. And a lot of them are kicking back a lot of their super chats to the Kiwi Farms, either publicly, you know, like admitting that they're doing that. Like, uh, you know, like, like Turkey Tom. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. You know a lot of this stuff. It's great. It's oh, yeah. really good. Yeah. It's really good. I, I just don't think my, my followers on Twitter know. Um, and so that's tier two, but tier three, <laughs> so, uh, when there is a consensus among the tier two judges, you know, when Dami Pesos says, you know, thumbs up, uh, when, when Flamenco says thumbs up, and when, you know, <laughs> BBB, Worski, uh, Baked Alaska, you know, all of the judges are in agreement, you know, this <laughs> particular fact is true, like, Keppels like, did this, yeah. this. Well, they turned on Baked Alaska. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, it's, the, the, the names are always changing, but the economy does not fucking change. It's always the same three-tier system with Moon on top and everybody getting fucked on the bottom, especially the normal users. Um, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> it's so true. Like, it's, it's it, you know, it's people think that they're, like, contributing to something in the world. I, I don't know. Uh, God, the Kiwi Farms has gotten trolled so many fucking times. I mean, even so early in its history. Remember the when they thought... The Edward Green thing, that was just... Oh my gosh. Remember Jace Connors? Oh gosh, yeah. That person was a troll, remember? Yeah. Like, nothing was real. But the Kiwi Farms believed that Jace Connors was real. <laughs> I used to believe it, even. Like, I legitimately thought that Jace Connors was a real person and not a troll account. That was like the, the Marine dude, right? Yes, yes. Deagle Nation. <laughs> I remember that. Yep, yep. Um, he made like this crazy threat against, I think, Brianna Wu, maybe? But, like, outside of his pickup truck? You know, in, like, the snow? And was, like, waving a gun around? Do you remember this? Yeah. Well, yeah, anyway, that's when things got too real for him, and he had to admit that it was, like, um, performance art, you know? So, Power, I, I, gotta, I just gotta answer this question from Powerball. We're not saying that Bake specifically is currently giving money to Kiwi Farms. I, I know Kiwi Farms completely turned on Baked Alaska. We're just using these names yes, as examples. Yes, examples, because I don't want to give you people, like, okay. I don't want to just put out there, oh, by the way, if you want to know everybody to harass, that's trans, like, uh, let me just give we're you not, all the We're names. not keeping farms. We're not going to give you a harassment list. Uh, yeah, or a list of follows, you know? <laughs> I'm not going to give you the list of the super chats to go donate to, to donate to Kiwi Farms. <laughs> so, you know, I, I am using outdated information on purpose. So, but they used to be friendly, and you all know it. So, and by the way, I'm mad at the internet. <laughs> you know, I'm mad at the internet. Um... Powerball. He says and brags about how much fucking money he has. That he is making a nice salary now, a thirty thousand dollars, and he's living like a king up in Serbia, and he's gonna be able to like finally get a family. How's that going, Josh? Probably not well. Um, yeah. So you know, like I, I know that this is how the economy works, and obviously it just pisses him off to hear it because you know Powerball Pamela. I don't know if he is or not, but a, a lot of the like I said. I really think it's 99 one when it comes to the users that can research and the ones that fucking can't, with 99 against, and it's just, they will just defend Moon Moon just because they, like, enjoy the website and are sad over the situation, and it doesn't really matter, and so they will just point out any <laughs> perceived factual error, you know, so, but to move on, I want to talk about tier 3 because it's a funny fucking tier, so, Jim Medicare is essentially alone with Josh Moon and right now Ethan Ralph as those are the only ones that I think are actually in tier 3. However, obviously Moon's on top. Um, <laughs> it, it's weird to put Ralph in tier 3 because he fights with Moon so much, but still a lot of his content is sourced from the Kiwi Farm, so it's part of the Kiwi Farm's economy. I mean, he will talk about, like, because, like, you know, Ralph hates trans people as much as, like, Moon does. You know, they don't, they don't, like, they don't disagree on that. And, and so, you know, if he thinks that it could be possible to say on his show, haha, trans women don't pass good, which is, like, always the joke. It's the same joke every time, but, you know, these guys are just dumb and they <laughs> always laugh at it. I don't well, get how it. They, they just parrot the same bullshit. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny thing. I, I just have to mention the, the the brief unholy alliance between Keffels and even Ralph <laughs> for the purpose of fighting with Moon. Was just, right? <laughs> yeah, I... it was very brief, but it was funny. <laughs> it, it is funny. I mean, okay, if this had not happened, I would not even know who Keffels is, right? I don't play video yeah. games. I don't go on Twitch. <laughs> I'm a free software developer. You know, like like I would never run into this person in my life. And it's really the same, like, the only thing that I ever have talked about Ethan Ralph, like, the, the Ethan Ralph with is, like, about, you know, the Kiwi Farms, because he remembers stuff, you know, and I can sometimes use him as a source. Which, by the way, that is why uh, using follows as, like, a way to, you know, uh, paint people is dumb, because if you actually do research onto these things online, you don't try to make enemies out of people that could be sources, you know? Exactly. Ralph has helped me a lot, actually, like, with facts. He helped me remember the fucking name of Gonzalo Lira, you know? I couldn't remember it. I knew it happened. I saw it when it happened. But I just, you know, couldn't remember it. And and, and so, I, um, yeah. Ugh. So, yeah, even investigating, they asked me, well, Naya, how could you associate with this person? Um, they're a source. They have information. And as much as I may detest them, it's not usually a good idea to burn people. This is a very good comment by Burn Burn. Ralph used incorrect docs about a VTuber source from Kiwi Farms well after his fighting with them started. Yeah, exactly. And uh, somebody else, they dox VTubers? Yes. So, okay. The VTuber thing is really interesting because it's where some of the fractures are forming in the community. Moon doesn't care about VTubers. He doesn't care. Like, he thinks it's cringe. You, you know, oh my god, he's so... Oh, he's, he's, he's a character. Like, that's why he wrote in his... I call it the downtime manifesto. You know, it's what he had on the Kiwi Farms on page during the downtime. Um... They're basically saying, like, you know, the problem with the world is Wikipedia editors. Like, oh my god, those Wikipedia editors are ruining everything, you know. Uh, not the fact that... Not... Crash. Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> I know, I, I know, I know, I know. Um, all of the threads of the world are just, you know, just ruining everything with their actual adherence to facts. What a tragedy. In it, regardless, um, I don't know if you know this, the persona page on Wikipedia is my actual persona. He's holding up a citation needed. Um, in, in any case, I, uh, huh. M Moon has, like, this weird fucking system where he just allows people to moderate the VTuber form because it brings in a lot of traffic and therefore donos, you know, which he needs, but he doesn't care about it at all, and it's become a drain on him. And uh, what I mean by, like, tier three of the Kiwi Farms is... Um, the people like Worski or Big Alaska or their modern equivalents, you know, were, they're just not funny. They are not charismatic. They are a chore to listen to, especially PPP. Oh my God, that man. Like, at one time, I do, like, like, I knew that there was something I needed to know in an episode of, um, oh, that cringe show with Worski and PPP. I can't remember what it's called. Maybe Kino Casino? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. It's really dumb. And, like, having to listen to these these two idiots talk to each other for, like, hours and hours and hours. And, 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 and the discussion is nothing intellectual at all. It's just fucking, like, making oinking noises. Ethan Ralph fat, ha ha ha. Trans women don't pass good, ha ha ha. Did you see this? Like, fake news on a far-right website. Oh, no, I didn't. It's probably true, based. Like, that is the level that those guys are. And so... Even the alt writers don't find them entertaining, really. It's just like they, they have like as niche audiences, you know. The Kiwi Farms even has threads about all of them. And well, I saw that the Kiwi Farms was trying to source like alt right investors, and even the alt right doesn't really want to touch them. Oh yeah, I mean they've they've got to give the alt right some credit. They have they have you know not high standards, but they even have standards of oh, I'm not dealing with these clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, and that's exactly what the tier three folks are like. So, like Ethan Ralph and Jim Medicare, who are the two main ones, other than Moon, because obviously Moon just has a permanent position because he can, you know, control the Kiwi Farms. Even though he's not that charismatic, like mad at the internet is not that great to listen to. And I, I'm not saying I'm good to listen to, right? Like I'm autistic AF, as I've said multiple times in this stream. In fact, I screwed up the beginning. Although we did start on time for once. Um, I, I, I recognize that about myself. <laughs> These folks do not. However, Jim Medicare. And, uh, you know, Ralph, to a degree, are actually charismatic and actually funny. And it's even possible to say that, like, they could have been, like, radio jockeys in an earlier era, you know? Like, yeah. they are actually, as much as they are assholes, they are entertaining. But 
they don't want to have to deal with the plebs and the bullshit. And so, they essentially feed off of the tier 2 people that are, like, verifying, quote-unquote, the facts, right? And that's how Moon Moon got tricked about Keffels. Because Jim Medicare bought into it. And why did Jim Medicare buy into it? <laughs> because the tier 2 influencers bought into it. You see? So, it's just none of them do any of their own research, and yet they still stand, you know, as if they're just, like, here verifying the facts for you folks. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I understand why people find Medicare, like, funny. Like, it is sometimes funny to hear him make fun of Ethan Ralph. I mean, you know, Ethan Ralph's not a great person. He's not a lot of that great stuff. And so, but it's not hard to do. And I, when you know, like, that he looks down on all of them. And, and he admits this. His old name used to be Internet Aristocrat because he's grifting all of them, you, you know? Like, I guarantee that when Medicare ends his stream, the thing that he's thinking is, like, wow, I just scammed a bunch of R slurs out of money again. I am so fucking smart. Because I sometimes call him King MD, like King Charisma. He is just the one that is very neurotypical and very entertaining, and so is able to scam all of them into giving him, like, their information, right? And he has the basic OSINT skills to be able to verify it, but not strong ones. And so you that's, know, yep, go that's ahead. the thing. That's the thing. A lot of people have basic basic OSINT skills, but it is so easy to fool, to fool the data brokers. So you've got these people and they're doing shit, you know, they're Google dorking shit, they're going on Ben Verified, but that's so easy to, to feed those those entities false data. So they're, they're, they're verifying stuff with basic OSINT skills, but that's all they've got. And a lot of times basic OSINT skills returns bad data. You, you get what I mean? It, it's like, okay, you're, you're a step above just posting blatant bullshit on the internet. But to call something confirmed based on that, I mean, it would never stand in a court of law. It would never stand in any sort of standard of proof or evidence. But, you know, in the Kiwi farms, it doesn't matter because all that matters is can we can we cause alarm? Can we make something controversial? Can, can we get attention? I mean, they call furries and trans women and stuff attention whores, but they're the biggest attention whores on the Internet. I mean, they want their ass pats for making threats. Yeah, for sure. They totally do. And they want their ass pats for making posts. And <laughs> a lot of the farmer drama happens when, like, the sources aren't being properly credited. Because you know it happens a lot. Like, when things move up the chain from Tier 1 to Tier 2 to Tier 3, oftentimes Jim Medicare will just fucking cite himself. <laughs> and so, you know, everybody on the bottom just gets, like, shafted, you know. Ah, fuck off, Flamenco. You didn't do anything. Yeah, who are you to me? Nobody. So, you know, um... I always find that entertaining, by the way, like, seeing them sometimes. Because, like, their fans will see about it, too, you know? Like, oh, it's always not fair that they don't, like... It, Jim never mentions, like, it came from, you know, like, our yeah, community. I mean, I mean, yeah, shit rolls downhill. It's all rolling down from, from Moon Moon. Yeah, please go into that, by the way, because I think you have a much greater insight than I do. Being trans, first of all, because, like, I... It, Moon Moon doesn't really target a lot of furries, you know? I could talk a little bit about, like, near, you know, also known as Blue, like, why... I got so, you know, all over that, but... Was, ...was targeted because because they were the combination. You know, they were furry, they were trans, they were neurodivergent. You know, the holy trinity for, for Kiwi Farms. Um, and, you know, I, I think... I think what Moon Moon likes to do is I think he likes to live on the edge of plausible deniability, but he just can't help himself and fuck up that facade. Um, you know, I'm trans, you know, my thread originally didn't get hardly any attention. When I really started to get attention was when my, when my ex visited the thread and posted all, all that load of, uh, I'm just going to call it what it is, horse crap. And the reason why that horse crap got attention is because it was explosive, it was dramatic, and it was about a trans person. Um, Kiwi Farms, when it comes to how they deal with, with people in their threads, it's it's like it's like if the National Enquirer and those really trashy talk shows like Murray and and uh, there were a few others on the air. Uh, Steve Wilkos, I think, was one. It's like all of those trashy media entities. They get together, they drop a bunch of acid, and then they have the baby and they give the baby acid, and that's Kiwi Farms. <laughs> okay, I brought up this image while you were talking, and this is. 
Um, I, you won't be able to see it right away, but it'll come up on the screen. But the, the image is on Wikipedia that I'm talking about. And this is the main problem, is like, the, the, the research is so bad, but the things that they will accept as research is bad. But for example, they will just accept a screenshot, you know, uh, and if, if, if somebody that they trust says, oh, it disappeared too fast, guys, wasn't able to archive it, you know, like, a lot of them will just believe that, and especially if something has also receded into the past, and so, you know, maybe the archive disappeared. Maybe it, a whole bunch of things could have happened, right? Links break, you know, the longer yeah. something. I'll give you an example of how stuff is, is transformed. So they went from Naya has been seen talking to a zoo file. And again, it, it's it's a known fact that I investigate zoo files. Um, I'm, I'm part of the reason that Cupid the Deer, uh, Matthew Grabowski is sitting in jail right now. But, you know, aside from that point, you know, they, they went on, they went from Naya has, has been seen talking to a zoo file online to, oh my God, Naya is a pedo zoo kidnapping piece of, just the transformation. And, and that's how it happens. And, and it depends on the tier of the user. If some uh, unknown user says, hey, I've got screenshots of X, Y, and Z, uh, but it's not verified, they're going to laugh at him. They're going to ridicule him. But, you know, if someone like, like Stupid Face or someone like, you know, the tier two people, say that it's just accepted as fact exactly there's this reputation economy where these people and that's why they use kiwi farms it makes them feel powerful it makes them feel like they are the final i guess arbiter of is this true information or not and they and they have the power to cause chaos about it oh yeah you can tell that like for example when you listen to the kino casino ppp show this makes him feel really powerful you know uh being able to be an arbiter of the facts in his mind and 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 i without any actual checks or balances. You know, I understand to a degree, which is another reason I brought up the image, because, like, Moon really fucking hates Wikipedia, but Wikipedia has everything that the Kiwi Farms actually claims to want to be. It has standards against doing original research, for example. It has standards about the kinds of photos you can use. And it's not like I, as a non-admin, and even an admin cannot just do whatever the hell they want. Like, there is a foundation that owns it. There's all of these you know, horrible checks and balances that don't allow losers, to be quite honest, to build up a rapport among the users there, and then to be able to insert some fake information along with the real. Because that's how it happens. Um, it's, they know that they're just an anonymous account, right? But they, you know, have a name, like, as you've said, like, the username Stupid Face, and they have built up such a rapport that people just trust them. And so, you know, it's not that hard to fake a screenshot at all. It, uh, yeah. I, um, somebody asked, like, what archives would work. Well, I, I feel like you could talk about this a little better, but I, a lot of websites these days are just trying to make themselves harder to archive, and it sucks. Um, yeah, so, archive, um, I think it used to be archive.md way back when. I think it's active on, give me one second, archive.ph. There's nothing wrong with the general archive and, and with keeping information and stuff like that for if a site goes down. That's not what anybody is against. And, and for Kiwi Forums to say that it's a benevolent archiver it is complete and total bullshit. That's what archive.ph is. You know, they don't discriminate what they keep data on, but they also don't post a discussion forum dedicated to the harassment of people in, in it. And, and again, with things being harder to archive, you're correct. I know archive.ph, they, Twitter has made some sort of change to make it harder for their stuff to get archived. Yeah, like it's impossible to do video or to archive video on archive.ph now. Um, Facebook is really hard to archive. Uh, At one point, when we stopped doing this after um, we were attacked, but at one point, a uh, community was blocking uh, the whole you know, all of the IPs known to be used by the archiver, um, you know, in, in a self-defense mechanism because it was being used against us by Kiwi Farms. We, we since rescinded all of those blocks. But, you know, stuff like Kiwi Farms, they're making people resistant to archiving. And, and archiving, you know, keeping record of sites because they can go down forever, keeping those records is important. And, and you've got people like Kiwi Farms, and, and that's why people are kind of coming out against that. And I know... I sound a little disorganized in my speech right now, but my main point is I'm not against archiving. I think archiving is a wonderful thing, and I think sites like Kiwi Farms do more to harm that effort than they do to help out. Totally agree. Um, I am 
I think we're going to take a break. We've been going an hour 45, and it's not going to be a long one, five minutes. I, I really need one. Um, I do as well. <laughs> yeah, I really need one, so I, I was going to cut in with that. I also need to organize my thoughts and figure out, you know, if there's anything else that we need to talk about. Thank you so much for doing this, you know, by the way. I, I learned a lot. I hope people have learned a lot from this. You know, I... I really have. So we're just going to listen to the Korean pop music as usual. And, um, yep, uh, we will be back in eh, five to ten minutes. Okay. Bye-bye.